Swim Team by Johnny Christmas. The first chapter Friday read aloud video with the word nerd. Will Bree sink or swim when she gets to her new school? Let's find out in this amazing award-winning graphic novel. This story has won the Credit Scott King Award, has been a National Book Award long list finalist, and also one of Kirkus's best books of the year. Let me tell you a little bit about it. Bree can't wait for her first day at her new middle school, Enith Brigitha, home to the mighty manatees, until she's stuck with the only elective that fits her schedule, the dreaded Swim 101. The thought of swimming makes Bree more than a little queasy, yet she's forced to dive headfirst into one of her greatest fears. Lucky for her, Etta, an elderly occupant of her apartment building and former swim team captain, is willing to help. With Etta's training and a lot of hard work, Bree suddenly finds her swim craze community counting on her to turn the school's failing swim team around. But that's easier said than done, especially when their rival, the prestigious Holyoke Prep, has everything they need to leave the mighty manatees in their wake. Can Bree defy the odds and guide her team to a state championship? Or have the manatees swum their last lap for good? Swim Team by Johnny Christmas, for future swimmers, wherever they may be. This story starts taking place in Brooklyn, and Chapter 1 is called Butterflies. Alligators? Yep. And sea turtles? Yep, they got those in Florida, too. How big is the new tub, Dad? We're not getting a manatee, Bree. But I did get that puzzle you wanted for the trip. Dad! It's very advanced. We can get a simpler, no way, Dad. I'm going to solve it. All right, then. Let's hit the road. One thing to note, we're going to pause here for just a second. The text in the yellow boxes are words that Bree is thinking. She's kind of narrating the story for us. And then the text in the white speech bubbles are words that the characters are saying out loud. So Bree's thinking, hi, I'm Bree. I'll figure it out in no time, she tells your dad. You know... Too bad when I do, I won't be able to show my friends, since I'll be at a different school in a different state. You know going to a new school reminds me of the butterfly effect. What's that? I never told you about the butterfly effect? No. And then Bree says, and this is my dad, Ralph. Dad got into a training program in Florida, IT or coding, I think. Plus a job as a delivery driver, so he'll really have two jobs. That's why we're moving. And then dad says, it's a process that explains how little changes can have a big effect. It goes like this. A butterfly flaps its wings far away. Let's say over Beijing. And by the time those changes appear far, far away, like Florida, sure, like Florida, those tiny wings can lead to whipping winds, churning seas, and a mighty storm. And you can see that... Bree and her dad are now arriving in their new town, Palmetto Shores, Florida. You can see there's a billboard sign promoting the Holy Oak five-time champion swim team as well. Lots of palm trees and fun-colored buildings are waiting them as well. Dad keeps talking as they pull up to a restaurant. Or a perfectly sunny day. You never know. Small changes, big, unpredictable effects. It happens with people, not just butterflies. We affect other people in ways we can't guess. Like a puzzle I don't know the solution to yet? Exactly, Dad says. You'll have an effect on your new school too, maybe as a part of the math club? School is very important to Dad, Bree is thinking. He always says, Remember, an education is one thing no one can take away from you. Focus on your books, worrying about making friends later. And then some other people in a different booth start talking and they say, Holyoke is going all the way to state this year, again. And then the waitress is saying to that man, their coach is a bit intense, no? And he says, that's what it takes to win. And she says, if you say so. Bree's looking at the menu and she says to her dad, lots of swimming and water puns on the menu. Well, look at that. The menu says ice cream float, mussel bowl, sea biscuits, Bermuda pie angles, orca julius, boatload of fries, and all sorts of other things. Dad says I guess the owner likes swimming? More juice, dear? Maybe just a splash, ma'am. Get it, Dad? Very punny, Bree. As they're waiting for their food to arrive, Bree starts thinking about some of her favorite things. To feel better about the move, I've been thinking about stuff that makes me happy. Things like doing homework with Dad cooking, the library, and 
then there's this kind of negative cloud that says, well, what about the stuff you don't like, Brie? And she says, who asked you? But sometimes negative thoughts take over, and I think about the things that make me nervous or scared. I second-guess and self-doubt myself when I don't want to. Things like, is that a mouse? Did I lose my key? There's so much that worries you. What if we're locked out of the house? And her worries just kind of build up and feel like they're going to overwhelm her. That negative thinking kind of takes over, so Bree starts to think about all the things she doesn't like. Things like sports and pools and not having friends anymore. And those negative thoughts keep building up, and inside her head she's thinking, you'll never make new friends, ever. But then her dad interrupts her thoughts and says, Bree? And she says, huh? And then dad says, this is it. Our new home. Let's get moved in. Excited? Icky pool, Bree thinks. Do I get to pick my room? Pick any room you want, Dad says. As long as it's a small one, haha. Very funny, Dad. Almost done. You okay with that box? Looks a little heavy. I've got it, Bree says. Great. I've got something for the landlord. Actually, it's heavier than I. Be right back. Dad! What did he pack in this box? Bricks? Welcome! You must be Bree, a woman says. And Bree says, look. And she almost drops the box. Yes, yes, I am. And the woman says, I'm Etta. I live upstairs. I just met your dad. He tells me you like puzzles. Bree is trying to be polite and she starts to say, my arms are getting, but Etta keeps talking. I love puzzles, jigsaw puzzles mostly. I get puzzles made from old photos, puzzles of my cat or vacations or old friends. And a girl is walking by and she thinks to herself, looks like she could use a rescue. We can work on a puzzle together, Etta keeps saying. Oh, okay, Bree says. Then the other girl jumps into the conversation. Hi, Miss Etta. Lara, on your way to the pool? You know it. Let me know if. See you later, Miss Etta. She'll talk your ear off if you let her. Ha ha, she's not so bad, Bree says. Bree reaches out a hand trying to shake the new girl's hand without dropping the box. I'm Bree. Clara. We probably go to the same school. Enith. Enith. Yep. Enith, forget the middle. Maybe I'll see you there. Okay. See ya. And then Bree's dad comes back and he says, Bree, there you are. Is that the box with the books? No wonder it's so heavy, she says. Been looking all over for this. Ha ha. And dad takes just one book out of the box. And Bree says, Dad, come on. First day of school. Seven o'clock. Bree taps off her alarm. She is so excited. She hops out of bed. It looks like she wore her first day of clothes, first day of school clothes to bed. And she says, now let's see which folder shall I pick? My favorite folder, of course. She's rushing around the house and her dad says, Bree, sit down and finish your breakfast. And she says, too excited. First day of school. And she's practically bouncing all around the house. She's just so excited. In the small picture in the top corner, we can see a picture of Bree's new middle school, Enith Brigitha Middle School. And now she's walking down the hallway and she's thinking to herself, now where is the office? When suddenly she hears a familiar voice and someone calls out, Bree? I thought that was you. And then Bree turns around and says, Clara, looking for the office? Can't find it, Bree says. I'll take you, but first let me show you around the school. Yes, please, says Bree. Our school's not very fancy. We don't have the newest stuff, but it's really chill. You'll fit right in. There's my friend Humberto. He's an artiste. See? Chill. Oh, and there's the math club. Math's my favorite subject. What about you? Lunch, Clara says. Just kidding. Probably swim class. I'm trying out for the swim team this year. I wish I were better at math, though. We can help with math. We can be study buddies. Bet. Clara says. Well, there's the office. I'll see you later. See you, Clara. And then there's a nice sign that says, welcome students. Moments later, Brie finds herself in the office and talking to one of the administrators. And she says, and for your fourth period elective, Brie's ready for this one. She says, math puzzles, please. And the secretary or guidance counselor, whoever she's talking to says, unfortunately, math puzzles is full. Oh, but it's the only elective I want to take. Sorry. Bree looks back at her list again. Okay, how about yearbook? 
And the lady says, let me check. Sorry, that's full too. Origami round table, Bree tries, full. Bookkeeper's corner, full. Swampland study group, full. Sewer maintenance seminar, sounds stinky, full. Wait, here's one, yes? Swim 101. Swim 101, Brie looks super panicked. Remember, and her list of things she dislikes is sports and pools, and this will be both together. She is super nervous. She's reached fourth period, the time in her elective, when in her schedule, when she's supposed to go to her elective, which is Swim 101, and she wanders out to the pool, takes a seat in the bleachers, and the instructor slash coach slash teacher says, welcome to Swim 101. I'm Coach Pinella. Before we start, is there anyone here who can't swim? And Bree is thinking, oh my goodness. What? I, yikes, I don't even, and you're going to have to pick up a copy to see what happens next. Hopefully you'll be able to find that copy of Swim Team in your school library, your local library, be able to purchase it from your favorite local indie bookstore, or if you can't find it there, grab it via the link in the description box. I'll also have a link there for all of the other graphic novel first chapter Friday reloads I have for you, so you can discover even more great middle grade stories in this amazing format. Many of them are award-winning, and some even have interviews with the authors. I hope you find something that you like. Thanks so much for coming to my channel, Learning with the Word Nerd. I hope you'll come back again for more great content, including First Chapter Friday videos, Brain Break, quiz games, direct instruction videos, teacher tips, instrumental playlists, and more. Please like this video and subscribe, and I'll see you again next time. Happy reading!